Did y'all like that little avatar that Tall Boy got? That's a lot. He trying to replace me, y'all. <laughs> you like that? Sure. that if that, he doing that, if he doing that, he gonna replace me. <laughs> no, he ain't gonna replace you. What might replace you? <laughs> they got an article. And hey, y'all, this is this is a little spooky. This is what I mean by that. He saying he gonna replace Tall Boy might replace him. But uh, no, driverless semis could be months away. Rebus is a truck driver, and they saying they gonna have driverless semis. Tall Boy might be replacing me, but them driverless semis might be replacing Rebus. Let me tell y'all what I'm talking about. Would you be safe with this? Would you be okay with this? Let us know in the comments. They say on a sunny morning, an 18-wheeler will pull into a truck depot in Palmer, Texas. That's not too far from Dallas, Texas. They said the driver will step out of the cab and help transfer his trailer to a second rig outfitted with powerful sensors. Now, the second truck will head south on Interstate 45 toward Houston. They said it would move cautiously, mostly cruising in the right lane at 65 miles an hour, although that the speed limit is 75. And they say after three and a half hours, the truck will exit the freeway in Greenpoint. Now, they say a neighborhood in the north of Houston, they, they say it will proceed to a second truck depot where the trailer will again be transferred to a new rig. And a different driver will get in and haul the cargo to his final destination a few miles away. Now, the trucks travel the 200 miles between Dallas and Houston all the time. But the only difference with this particular ride, they said that uh, there will be no one in the vehicle. <laughs> the, a startup called Aurora has spent seven years and hundreds of millions of dollars preparing for this driverless trip which it hopes to complete before the end of the year. Now, they said that the CEO, Sterling Anderson, at the company's office said that he's looking forward to this. They said that they showed them the lab with machines to measure how well Aurora's hardware copes with the temperature swings and vibrations it will experience on the highway. Now, one machine shakes so hard that it needs a separate foundation to prevent it from damaging the building. Now... This is where it gets good, right here. It gets interesting here. They were saying that each truck had not one, but two computers tucked behind the driver's seat. Each computer had its own power and network connections. So if one computer failed, the other could take over automatically. Now, in a self-driving truck, you no longer have the backup of a human. So you have to make changes to the actuation architecture. The steering actuators and the braking actuators, all them big words, okay? They said, you can't have a single point of failure. The changes required to this base truck go very deep. Now, the stakes are high. They say, if Aurora's first driverless trip down I-45 goes well, there will be dozens and hundreds and thousands of trips just like it. Now, with hundreds and thousands of long-haul truck drivers in the United States alone, this is a huge and potential potentially lucrative market. They gonna put you out of business, Revis. What you think about this? Uh, I don't think they're gonna put me out of business. The problem is there's a lot of things that those driverless trucks can't do. One, you got to have somebody there to hook up the trailers because a driverless truck can't hook up his own trailer. But they have somebody they can't there. Land his gear. Hold up! But they said that they have somebody there when they get to the to, to the next destination. So all they just needed the truck just to get from one destination to the other, and then they'll just have somebody just go in and back it on up, back that thing up like juvenile. They're take they're taking it to a depot, but they need a truck driver to take it from the depot to its final destination. Okay. Now this isn't new because I've seen these driverless trucks. They also had someone behind the wheel because they have flaws. And they're talking about long haul, and three hours is not long haul. But they say they got to try well, we it first. We have to see how this goes. Okay. Let's see. The, uh, a question from Tech Troublemaker say, my question is, uh, will Revis drive that or at least ride along with it? <laughs> 
That's what they want to know. If the push comes to show, and they're going to have these driverless trucks and they're going to be taking over CDL drivers, then it looks like I may be in one of those trucks. Oh, okay. Now, look, this ain't the only company that's doing all of this, all right? Aurora just raised $483 million, extending its runway into 2026. But they say they got a couple other driverless startups that are in business as well. And it's a company called Kodiak, which has signed contracts with industrial and military customers to help keep the lights on while it perfects its driverless technology for long-haul trucking. And then they got another company called Gaddick, is developing driverless box trucks to carry merchandise on shorter trips from distribution centers to retail locations for customers like Walmart and Kroger. Yeah, th this is real big, man. Uh, about 10 years from now, the truckers saying that they don't want to drive, they might be out of business. You think? What you They've think been trying to push us out of the industry for the longest. Yeah. Now, here's the only problem that we have about all of this, right? Who got the insurance? Because if something go wrong, it's going to be a big issue, right? Uh, you would think so, right? You're depending on computers. Something can go wrong. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to ask the audience, what do they think of this? Because this is a lot. I don't know if I like this or not, but we're going to let the audience ask them, what do you think of driverless semis hitting the highway? One, if you're on your phone, if they can deliver the load safely, I'm cool with it. Two, Ain't no way. Three, it's okay to test it, but keep it in the rural area. Four, what does the company insurance look like? Or five, who does the police blame if it's an accident? One, two, three, four, five. Let us know in the comments what you think about these driverless semis hitting the highway. It's the Lab Tech Show. Join us Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern at thelabtechshow.com. Embrace it or get left behind. Alrighty then.